How's it going everybody? In this video we are going to solve 8th question of chapter 2 part B from Complex Optimization book. Before jumping to the solution, let's suspend some time and see what the problem is asking. Our goal is to show if S is a polyhedron. If you do not know what a polyhedron is, please refer to my video that goes over them thoroughly. Also, you can check my video of question 8 that solves part A. I'll put a link to those videos in the description section below. To make this video self-contained, I will go over the concept of polyhedron very quickly. A polyhedron is the solution set of a bunch of finitely many linear equalities and linear inequalities where the solution set of linear equalities is called a hyperplane and the solution set of linear inequalities is called half a uh, half space if you do not know what a hyperplane or half space is please refer to my video on them i'll put a link to that video in the description section below let's look at the first constraint that we have in this constraint this sign is called the curl inequality it is the generalization of an inequality. When you are considering vectors like x, which is a vector in Rn, it represents component-wise inequality. Therefore, we have n inequalities like this one, this one, and all the way down like this one. This set of inequalities has a special name. By this set, I mean the set of all inequalities inside this set. We call it the non-negative orthant. In R2, the non-negative orthant here is uh, equivalent to the first quadrant where every component has a non-negative value. For the second constraint, notice that this is a vector in Rn whose components are all 1. Therefore, we have this equality in R2, it is a line passing uh, 0, 1 here and 1, 0 here. If we put the first two constraints together, we get a special set that is called probability simplex. In R2, it is a line segment starting from 0, 1 and ending at 1, 0. If we add components of x that is inside the probability simplex, it sums up to 1. Note that all components are greater or equal than 0. The last two constraints can be expanded as two linear combinations of xi's. By xi's, I mean x1, x2, all the way down to xn. Notice the exponents of xi's are all 1. So we have x1 to the first, x2 to the first, xn to the first. That is why I said they are two linear combinations of xi's. Now let's put them together. We have n half spaces, one hyperplane here, one hyperplane here, and one hyperplane here. We ended up with n half spaces and three hyperplanes. Does this show S is a polyhedron? Yes, it does, because we have n half spaces and three hyperplanes. Both n and 3 are finite numbers. Therefore, we have finitely many hyperplanes and half spaces that is consistent with the definition of a polyhedron. Hence, the set S is a polyhedron. This finishes up the video. Uh, thank you for watching my videos and I hope you've enjoyed this video. There are two things you can do to support me. You can support me by liking my videos and giving them a thumbs up. Also, you can share my videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. Finally, please make sure to subscribe to my channel to get notifications for new videos and have a great day.